we have a special guest for what's in the news today. And I want to bring her in, but I wanted to, Jennifer to quickly say the headline, what you found in the news. Yeah, so what we found in the news today, if you've been listening, <laughs> CBN orders banks to close cryptocurrency accounts. Awesome. People are upset. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And you know what? We thought about this what's in the news is too hot. We cannot afford to just talk about it by ourselves. So we decided to bring... The only female certified cryptocurrency investigator in Nigeria, Irene, our very own Irene Obani, and she's joined us live from Abuja. Irene, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Uwa. Thank you, Jennifer. Good to be here. Yes, so, so Irene, because we have little time, but we want to get out a lot, you know, can you please break down this cryptocurrency and, you know, is CBN truly empowered to, to stop the move of cryptocurrency that is going around the world right now? All right, thank you very much. Um, it, when I saw the news, I was a bit appalled because when the central bank of a country decides to stop deposit money banks, stop non-bank financial institutions from, you know, allowing exchanges perform cryptocurrency transactions when there are tools already set in place to regulate and even check every single crypto transaction from the initiating wallets to the end users mm. when all of these tools are in place i begin to wonder are they equipping themselves to understand and learn how to use these tools you can't stop technology right from history you you, you would know that means of performing commercial transactions have always you know changed yeah we had the butter system where we had things like carries being used to perform commercial transactions mm -hmm. we also had things like whale shell um whale teeth yeah. we had things like grains we had um cattles we moved from that to coinage Mm. Although we are still trying to consider, oh, did that come from China or um, from Greece? But we had the coinage system. Although it was China, then we, we had like sh sh um, shillings and all of that. We, we moved to fiat currencies. We now had the Britain Woods, um, you know, conference where they talked, that was about 1944, thereabout, where they talked about, oh, now we want to peg the dollar to gold. Yes. In that case, we saw a situation where $35 was equivalent to one ounce of gold, even though it has. Um, you know, multiplied by over 52 now, where yeah. we are seeing one ounce of gold um, being equivalent to over 1,800 plus dollars, mm -hmm. you know. And then we now move to, you know, regular currencies. Of course, you can see that the medium of performing commercial transactions over this period has changed. So with the speed in technology, mm. it is only a bit more, an appalling for you to try and revoke or refute or say you do not want digital currencies. Mm. For example, countries like China, they are way ahead of even the United States in terms of using digital currencies to perform transactions. Not to talk of Nigeria. Hey, guess what? The report that was brought up by um, Chain Analysis, the Chain Analysis report, which um, so, sort of did their research between June of 2019 to June of um, 2020. Yeah. Nigeria is one of the top 10 countries globally that are making use of cryptocurrency to perform transactions. Wow. The other two African countries, South Africa and Kenya. So when you tell me they are trying to ban banks, when they are, so, when they are um, you know, technologically um, enabling tools to help both banks, Hmm. find and find where the bad actors are playing hmm. where we have tools to check the um bank's exposure to illicit transactions being performed using cryptocurrency yeah and then you think that your solution should be to completely ban the use of cryptocurrency or um its performance in terms of utilizing them as a tool to perform transactions using banks. I just don't understand. You cannot fight technology. You know, Irene, so interestingly, we tried to search the website for the CBN. I, I, I think that communique has been pulled down from their website because it's no longer yes. there. I think we, we even screen grabbed it if the producers can flash it. You know, they, they are no, it's no longer there on the website. But, you know, what would be the advantage, you know, to CBN if they embrace cryptocurrency? Because it seems like... 
um, why they are trying to do this, maybe all the little money that they get from transactions, you know, you know, there's no middleman when it comes to cryptocurrency. It's just you and the person yeah. that you're dealing with. So what, what do you think should be um, the, the advantage to CBN allowing cryptocurrency, for instance, to happen in Nigeria? Uh, or the disadvantage, so rather? The way it works, all like the regular fiat currency, which is like the normal monies that um, we're making use of, you know, where the CBN has said, these are the legal tenders. This, this is what we recognize as a medium of exchange when you're performing transactions, yeah. right? Cryptocurrency doesn't have that. It is decentralized. Hmm. It doesn't have a middleman. Do you understand? Yeah. So it, it's private. You can perform your transactions without any form of um, any any hindrance of any sort. Right? Yeah. But I'm expecting that CBN should start to form a level of partnership, the relevant relationship with exchanges that are already existing. Mm. For example, I performed an investigation last year, towards the end of last year, about the use of cryptocurrencies. Do you know that in just one day, Nigerians had performed transactions worth over 4.3 billion naira, converting it to Bitcoin, wow. to perform their transactions? Wow. Wow. So, and you know that as at that time, that last year, because of COVID and all of that, we saw that um, people, people, some people lost their jobs, so they were literally looking for ways to still earn money, perform transactions, not having, and CBN even made matters worse because you had a limit of which, for which you could even use um, dollars. Dollars, yes. There was a limit that you could use to perform transactions. So, would people's businesses stop because CBN does not have enough um, dollar? That's, hey. that's, that's, that's not simple. You should embrace this technology. Mm. Now, I challenge the CBN to tell us if they have started to train their staff, if the regulatory authorities, EFCC, if there is a pending case now regarding cryptocurrency, do they have, do their staff, do they have the skill set relevant and necessary to identify mm. these perpetrators? Yeah. So rather than spend time sitting down and writing circulars like that, that they will end up pulling down, why don't they sit down and start to learn this trade? Okay. Learn this crap because history does not um, deny itself. It has shown us that right from the 10th century up until now, the medium of commercial exchange has always Change. you know, transcended. Yes. Yeah. And it's only logical and, I mean, it's common sense to know that with the speed in which technology has taking over and dominated the world now. Crypto digital currency is the way to go. Mm. We have Bitcoin, we have Ethereum, we have Zcash, we have Monero, we have a lot of them. Wow. So please, I would employ the CBN, I don't know, we may be out of time now, yeah. but the CBN should rather help themselves mm. because the citizens are not backing down. Mm. Businesses have been, okay, let me give you an example. That chain analysis reports, it actually showed that some, I wouldn't call the name of the country anyways, but those who come and do illegal mining of gold and diamond, they actually use um, digital currencies to transfer their money to other um, countries. countries. So why don't we start to use tools like um, CLU, which is the Qualitative um, Law Enforcement Unified Edge. Those are some tools that banks can start to use to identify um, digital cryptocurrency transactions. Mm. We have the financial action, financial act tax force, that's the TA, TF. They, they, they actually, you know, came up with the regulation stating that they know your customer um, requirements when cryptocurrency transactions are about to be performed. If it's above $1,000, let us inform us, um, inform us pretty much. Mm. So why don't we start to have friendly regulations? Our Although policies. regulations are sort of their way of impeding and actually um, demoralizing the whole idea of the use of cryptocurrency. Okay, Irene. Oh, I know that we're out of time. I, yeah, we're, yeah out, we we're out of time, but I'm definitely going to look for a way to bring you back. Maybe next week we'll find a t uh, the time to actually deal with it. Because a lot of people are hearing cryptocurrency, crypto, they don't even understand, understand what it what is. It is yeah. But, I mean, from what I hear you, it is the digital um, currency for the future. So whether we like it or not, we must I'm embrace for it. contractual agreements. Yes. Yeah. We can use it in agriculture. Yeah. Renewable energy. Real estate. Mm. What are we talking about here? Yeah. Absolutely. Thank oh, no, you. So. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I really, I can see no, your, your, your pressure. <laughs>
Thank you so much. The Nigerians question is are too smart. Yeah. Our country, we are too talented. Mm. So when you try to suppress us, mm. make us... At oh. Thank you so much, Irene. <laughs> we're going to bring you back and we're going to have this conversation on cryptocurrency, a full one-hour show, maybe next week. Thank you so much, Irene. It's been an amazing time Thank you. talking Thank to you. you.